Greek family. Woman will never be Greek enough for husband's family. Dear Abby, I married a Greek man whose family never accepted me. Being young and naive, I tried everything to fit in, converting from Catholicism to the Greek Orthodox faith, attending all family functions, including them in our lives. It was never enough. My husband and I traveled to Crete with his family to visit his relatives there, and some extended family members refused to share the dinner table with me because I was not Greek. One of those family members was a priest. Our daughter, Athena, was born four years later. What broke the camel's back for me was a Christmas dinner when she was six. My father-in-law gave cards with $100 to all the ground children of Greek heritage. Athena received nothing and cried for hours, wanting to know why her grandfather didn't love her. My husband just tried to stay neutral. Abby, how far should someone have to go to fit in with their husband's family? Signed, Irish Again in New Hampshire. Hello, welcome to the vocabulary lesson for Greek family. Let's get started. Headline says, woman will never be Greek enough for husband's family. Greek, of course, uh, describes someone from Greece, the country of Greece. Um, and then she starts the letter, Dear Abby, I married a Greek man whose uh, family never accepted me. She said she was young and naive. Naive means uh, innocent. It means, uh, but, but not like guilty and innocent. It means you don't have much experience in the world. You don't know much about the world. And it also has the idea that you trust people too much. Right? You, you just, you're, you're maybe too friendly, too open, too much trust. You're not careful enough with people. That's naive, naive. So you don't have much experience in the world uh, and you don't know much about the world and life. Naive, naive. So she said she was naive when she got married. Uh, and she said she tried to fit in with her husband's family and she uh, converted from Catholicism to Greek to the Greek Orthodox faith. To convert means to change. And it can have a religious meaning. In this case, of course, it does have a, relig a religious meaning. To convert, in this case, means to change religions. Change religions. And we usually say convert to a new religion. So if you convert to Christianity, it means you used to be another religion, now you're a Christian. If you convert to Buddhism, you used to be something else, now you are a Buddhist. So that's to convert, to convert, to change from one religion to another. All right, and uh, she uses the word faith here. She converted to the Greek Orthodox faith. Greek Orthodox is a kind of Christianity, but different than the Catholic Church. And in this case, faith means religion. Now, faith can mean, like, belief. It can mean belief in something. You have a deep belief, even though you're not sure. But in this case, faith means religion, a religion. We sometimes use the You have to use it with the name of the religion. So we might say the Hindu faith, the Christian faith. The Muslim faith. So that just means the Muslim religion, the Christian religion, the Buddhist religion, the Hindu religion. Faith. It's a little bit different uh, meaning for faith than we normally, uh, than how we normally use it. In the second paragraph, we see the word relative. She said, my husband and I traveled to Crete, that's an island in Greece, uh, with his family to visit his relatives there. Relatives means family members, family members. But it usually means more distant family members. So your husband, your wife, your children, they are not relatives. We don't use the word relatives to describe your close close family, your, like your husband or your children. Relatives usually means grandparents, cousins, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews. All of those people we describe as relatives. So they're in your family, but they're, but they're not in your, living in your house. Well, they might be living in your house. Your grandmother could live in your house. But it's, it's, they're not so close, and it's not your immediate family. Relatives are a little farther away, like grandparents, cousins, etc. 
All right. And she said some extended family members refused to share the dinner table with her. Extended family has the same idea as relatives. Extended family means grandparents, uncles, aunts, and cousins. We usually say immediate family or nuclear family. That's your husband or wife and your children. Or, or if you're young, it, can, it means your father and your mother and your brothers and sisters. That's your immediate family. But then we have the extended family, and those are the relatives. Those are the people uh, like, who are a little farther, like grandparents, cousins, etc. So extended family. And they, these family members refused to share the dinner table with her. To refuse means to say no. means you say you will not do something. And refuse normally goes with an action, right? Somebody wants you to do something, and you refuse. So refuse. You refuse to do something. You refuse to do an action, usually. So in this case, they refuse to share the dinner table. It means they refuse to eat with her. So you refuse an action. You say no to an action. All right, and then uh, we go down to the next uh, paragraph. And, we, and she says, our daughter Athena was born four years later. And she said, what broke the camel's back for me? To break the camel's back, this is a common phrase in English. It has a short version and a long version. This is the short version. If you say, what broke the camel's back? But we also sometimes say, the straw that broke the camel's back. The straw that broke the camel's back or just broke the camel's back. Either one, it means it's the last thing. It's the action or the situation that finally makes you do something, that finally changes your mind. So you have to imagine uh, that you have a camel, right? It's an animal, and you're putting stuff on top of the camel. So you put a, you maybe your maybe straw, straws like grass, but you're putting some on the camel, and the camel's okay. You put more. You put more. It gets heavier and heavier and heavier. You put more. You put more. You put more. And oh, now the camel's, oh, his back is hurting. You more and more and more. And finally, you put one more, and the camel's back breaks. Right? So it's, that, it's the final thing. It's the final bad experience that causes the camel to, to break or to die. So this is where it comes from. And it, so it means like that you have some kind of bad situation and it's been happening a long time. So let's say in this case, the, the family, they do something bad to her. Then they do something, another thing that's bad. Then they do another bad thing. Then another. Each time she's a little more upset, a little more angry. But more, more, more bad things, more bad things, more bad things. Finally, they did something to her daughter. They were rude to her daughter. That was the last straw, right? That's what broke the camel's back. It was the last event after this. She's so angry, she will not be nice to them anymore. It's the final action, and now she can't, she can't handle it anymore. All right, and so what happened is that the father, the um, father-in-law was giving money to all the grandchildren who had Greek heritage, but didn't give one to their daughter. Heritage means, uh, when we talk about Greek heritage or um, German heritage, or Japanese heritage. Heritage means uh, where your family comes from. Where your family comes from. Um, and, it, and it's talking about your family in the past. So it doesn't mean right now. So we can have someone, uh, a child. This child was born in America. So the child, the girl is American. But she's of Greek heritage because her father's Greek. Her grandparents are Greek. Right? Uh, half of her family is Greek. So she's not Greek. The girl is not Greek because she's American, born in America, lives in America. But she is of Greek heritage. Right? Her family is Greek. So if someone, an immigrant, comes here, say from Mexico, uh, they're Mexican. But their children, let's say their children, they're born in America, they grow up in America, they always live in America. They're Americans, but they're of Mexican heritage. Their family going back in history was Mexican. All right. And then we keep going. And uh, she says that uh, her little daughter was really upset when she didn't get money from her father-in-law like everybody else. 
And then she said, her husband has tr just tries to stay neutral. Neutral means, uh, in this case, neutral means you don't pick a side. So I mean, we have one side against another side, and you say, oh, I'm not fighting on either side. I'm in the middle. I will not support either side. I am neutral. So the husband won't support his wife and daughter, and the husband also won't support his uh, Greek family. Uh, he just says, I'm neutral. He won't help either one. He won't choose either side. And then finally, in the last sentence, uh, she says, Abby, how far should someone have to go, or how far should I have to go to fit in with my f husband's family? Remember, to fit in means to, to have a good relationship with. To fit in with the family means have a good relationship with the family, to belong to the family, to be part of the family. That's to fit in. So she's saying, how far should I have to go to do this? And that means how far do I need to go? How far should I have to go? That just means how much do I need to do? How much do I need to do? Or how much should I try? That's the meaning of that phrase. How far should I have to go to learn English? It means, what must I do? How much do I need to do to learn English? Or, how much do I need to try to learn English? How far do I need to go? All right. So that's all. That's all the vocabulary in this little thing. Um, listen to this a few times. Make sure you know the vocabulary. This one's not too difficult, I hope. And then we'll move on to the uh, mini story. See you next time. Bye. Welcome to the mini story lesson for Greek family. Let's do the basic story first. Here we go. I'm walking down the street when a guy comes to me and says, Hi, can I chat with you for a moment? He looks clean and very neat. I'm quite naive, so I think he's just friendly. I say, okay. The man asks me, how far would you go to save yourself? I say, uh, what do you mean? He says, I'm talking about the Christian faith. I want you to convert to Christianity. Uh, actually, I'm a Buddhist, I say. What about your relatives? Are they Buddhist too? He asks. I tell him, no, just me. He then tells me that I will go to hell if I don't convert. He says I am a bad person. He tells me all Buddhists will go to hell. Finally, he says that the Buddha and all Buddhists serve the devil. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. I yell at him, go away. I refuse to listen to you anymore. Okay, let's go back to the top of our little story. And this time with questions. Here we go again. I'm walking down the street when a guy comes to me and says, Hi, can I chat with you for a moment? He looks clean and very neat. I'm quite naive, so I think he's just friendly. Do I have a lot of life experience? Do I know about life on the street? No, 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 I don't. I'm very naive, right? Kind of like a child. I don't really know that... Uh, people might try to sell something to me or get something from me on the street. I think everybody's just very nice and friendly. I'm very naive. Are children usually naive? Well, yes, that's right. Small children usually are naive, right? They, they're innocent. They don't know there are many bad people in the world or many people will lie. They're kind of naive. So I'm quite naive. This man says, can I chat with you for a moment? I don't know him. He's a stranger. I'm walking on the street. So this is naive. Is the other man naive? No, no. The other man's not naive, right? He knows he has something. He wants to tell me about his religion. He has a plan. He has life experience, right? He's not naive. But I'm kind of naive. I'm very innocent. I don't think he's trying to sell me something. I just think, oh, he's a friendly guy. I'm quite naive, very naive, like a child. So I think he's just friendly. I say, okay. The man then asks me, how far would you go to save yourself? Does he want to know how much I would do or how hard I would try 
to save myself, like save my soul, right? Yeah, that's exactly what he's asking. He wants to know, how much would I do? Would I try very hard? Would I do something that's very difficult? Would I change my life to save myself? He wants to know, how far would I go to save myself? Does he want to know how far I would go to save money? No, no, he doesn't care. He's not asking about me saving money. He doesn't know, want to know what I would do to save money. He wants to know how far would I go to save myself, right, my soul. He asks, how far would you go to save yourself? Does he want to know how far I would go to uh, save my body? No, he's not talking about my body, my physical body. He doesn't want to know how far I would go to save my body. He wants to know how far I would go to save myself, meaning my soul, my spirit, right, after I die. He says, how far would you go to save yourself? He's talking about my soul after I die. And I ask him, what do you mean? I don't understand. Do I understand what he means when he says, how far would you go? No, I don't, obviously. No, I don't understand what he means. How far would you go to save yourself? I'm a little confused by that. So he says, I'm talking about the Christian faith. Is he talking about his religion? Yes, exactly right. He's talking about the Christian faith. He's talking about the Christian religion. Is he talking about the Buddhist faith? No, no, he's not talking about the Buddhist faith. He's not talking about the Buddhist religion. He's talking about the Christian faith. Is he talking about the Jewish faith? No, he's not talking about the Jewish faith. Is he talking about the Islamic faith? No, he's not talking about the Islamic faith. Is he talking about the Hindu faith? No, he's not talking about the Hindu faith. What faith is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the Christian faith. And what does he want me to do? Well, he says, I want you to convert to Christianity. Does he want me to change my religion? Yes, he does. He does. He wants me to change to Christianity from my old religion to Christianity. He says, I want you to convert to Christianity. Does he want me to convert to Islam? No, no, he's not Muslim. He does not want me to convert to Islam. He wants me to convert to Christianity. Who does he want to convert to Christianity? Well, he wants me, AJ, to convert to Christianity. Does he want to convert to Buddhism? No, no, he does not want to become a Buddhist. No, he wants me to convert to Christianity. He does not want to convert to Buddhism. And I say to him, you know, actually, I'm a Buddhist, I say. And he asks me, what about your relatives? Are they Buddhist too? Does he want to know if my friends are Buddhist? No, no, he wants to know if my family is Buddhist, right? He says, what about your relatives? Are they Buddhist too? Is he asking about my family's religion? Yes, exactly right. He's asking about my family's religion. He says, what about your relatives? Are they also Buddhist? So he wants to know about my mom and my dad, but especially he wants to know about all of my family. So relatives usually means all the family, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins. He wants to know if my relatives are also Buddhist. Are my relatives Buddhist? No, no, my relatives are not Buddhist. In fact, uh, some of them are Christian, some of them no religion. So my relatives are not Buddhist, only me. Are my relatives Christian? Some of my relatives are Christian, not all of them. Some of them are are my relatives Buddhist? No, they're not. They're not Buddhist. My relatives are not Buddhist. So I say to him, no, just me, only me. He then tells me that I will go to hell if I don't convert. 
If I don't convert to Christianity, does he think I will go to hell? I will burn and after I die. Yes, exactly. He thinks if I don't change to Christianity, if I don't convert to Christianity, then I will go to hell after I die. Then he says I'm a bad person. He tells me all Buddhists will go to hell. Finally, he says that the Buddha and all Buddhists serve the devil. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Does that make me angry? Well, yes, yes, it's the last straw. It's the final straw that breaks the camel's back. It means he said many things to me, bad things. He's insulting me. He says, oh, you're a bad person. Oh, if you don't convert, you'll go to hell, right? More bad things, more bad things. I'm patient, I'm patient, I'm patient. But finally, the last thing, he says, all Buddhists serve the devil. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's the final bad insult, and I become angry. And I yell at him, go away. What is the straw that breaks the camel's back? Well, it's him saying all Buddhists serve the devil. That's the final bad thing that makes me lose control, lose my temper. So he says all Buddhists serve the devil. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. When he asks me, are your relatives also Buddhist? Is that the last straw? Is that the straw that breaks the camel's back? No, 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 no. I, I'm patient. After he says that, it's no problem. Okay, so what is the straw that breaks the camel's back? Well, it's when he says, all Buddhists serve the devil. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's the final insult. Then I get angry and I yell at him, go away. I refuse to listen to you anymore. Will I listen to him again? No, no, I refuse to listen to him anymore. I will never listen to him again. I refuse. I say, no, I won't do it. No, I will never listen to you again. I refuse to listen to him anymore. Do I refuse to listen to all Christians? No, 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 I, I don't mind all Christians. It's just this one guy. I refuse to listen to him ever again. I will never listen to him again. I refuse to listen to him. Only to him. I refuse to listen to him. Do I refuse to watch television again? Uh, no. I don't refuse to watch television. What do I refuse to do? Well, I refuse to listen to that guy again, right? I refuse to listen to him again. All right, that's the end of our little story. One more time, this time with pauses after the key phrases. I'll pause, say the key phrase after I pause, copy my pronunciation. That's the important part of this section. Copy my pronunciation, especially my intonation when I go up, when I go down, things like that. Okay, let's go. I'm walking down the street when a guy comes to me and says, Hi, can I chat with you for a moment? He looks clean and very neat. I'm quite naive. I'm quite naive. I'm quite naive. So I think he's just friendly. I say, okay. The man asks me, how far would you go to save yourself? How far would you go to save yourself? How far would you go to save yourself? Good. I say, what do you mean? He says, I'm talking about the Christian faith. I'm talking about the Christian faith. Good. I want you to convert to Christianity. I want you to convert to Christianity. Good. I say, actually, I'm a Buddhist. And he asks, what about your relatives? Are they Buddhists too? What about your relatives? 
Are they Buddhists too? What about your relatives? Are they Buddhists too? I tell him, no, just me. He then tells me that I will go to hell if I don't convert. He then tells me that I will go to hell if I don't convert. He says I'm a bad person. He tells me all Buddhists will go to hell. Finally, he says that the Buddha and all Buddhists serve the devil. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. I yell at him, go away! I refuse to listen to you anymore. I refuse to listen to you anymore. I refuse to listen to you anymore. Okay, great job. Now the final part of the mini story lesson. Pause your iPod, pause your computer, and try to tell all of the story yourself. Tell all of it out loud so you can hear it. Tell all of the story. You don't need to remember every word, but try to use the target vocabulary, the new vocabulary, correctly. If you can't, if you have trouble, no problem, relax, listen to it again. Just keep listening until you can pause and tell all of the story yourself. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome to the Point of View Mini Stories for Greek Family. Let's get started. First, the past tense. Five years ago, I was walking down the street when a guy came to me and said, Hi, can I chat with you for a moment? He looked clean and very neat. I was quite naive, so I thought he was just being friendly. I said, okay. The man asked me, how far would you go to save yourself? I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm talking about the Christian faith. I want you to convert to Christianity. Actually, I'm a Buddhist, I said. What about your relatives? Are they Buddhists too, he asked. I told him, no, just me. He then told me that I would go to hell if I didn't convert. He said I was a bad person. He told me all Buddhists would go to hell. Finally, he said that the Buddha and all Buddhists served the devil. That was the last straw. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. I yelled at him, go away. I refuse to listen to you anymore. All right, our second version. I'm, I'm going to change this a little bit to, so you get a little more practice. Just change the, the, the order of the story. Since I was a child, I have been very naive. Uh, I have always thought that people are very friendly, even if they're not. I have always accepted people and not worried about them or been suspicious. Right? I've always been quite naive since I was a child. Well, one day, I was walking down the street when a guy came up to me and said, Hi, can I chat with you for a moment? He looked clean and very neat. Since I was quite naive and have always been naive, I thought he was just being friendly, so I said, Okay. The man asked me, How far would you go to save yourself? I said, What do you mean? He said, I'm talking about the Christian faith. I want you to convert to Christianity. Actually, I'm a Buddhist, I said. What about your relatives? Are they Buddhists too, he asked. I told him, no, just me. He then told me that I would go to hell if I didn't convert. He said I was a bad person. He told me all Buddhists would go to hell. Finally, he said that the Buddha and all Buddhists serve the devil. That was the last straw. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I yelled at him, go away. I refuse to listen to you anymore. So you can notice I use the uh, present perfect have been um, for something that started long ago when I was a child and continued up to the time this story happened. 
then I change to the simple past because we're talking about one specific event and that it, it's already happened, it's done. Okay, let's now let's go to the future. Back to the future, here we go. In 10 years, 10 years from now. I'm imagining this. Maybe I, maybe I dream this, okay? This is a dream. I have a dream. In 10 years, I will be walking down the street when a guy will come up to me and he'll say, Hi, can I chat with you for a moment? He'll look clean and very neat. I'll be quite naive, so I'll think he's just being friendly. I'll say, Okay. The man's going to ask me, How far would you go to save yourself? And I'll say, What do you mean? He'll say, I'm talking about the Christian faith. I want you to convert to Christianity. Actually, I'm a Buddhist, I'll say. What about your relatives? Are they Buddhist too, he'll ask. I'm going to tell him, no, just me. He'll then tell me that I will go to hell if I don't convert. He'll say I'm a bad person. He'll tell me all Buddhists will go to hell. Finally, he'll say that the Buddha and all Buddhists serve the devil. That's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. I'll yell at him. Go away. I refuse to listen to you anymore. All right. Go back. Listen to each version. After each version, pause and try to tell that version yourself out loud so you can hear it. So listen to the first version, the past. Pause and tell the whole story again using the past 10 years ago. Second time, start the story with, you know, since I was a child, and uh, tell the story yourself out loud. And then, again, listen to the future version and pause and tell the future version yourself. If it's difficult, if you can't do it, no problem. Just relax. Go back. Listen very carefully again and again and again, and then try again. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome to the commentary for Greek family. So this is another one of those interesting Dear Abby letters. Again, quite short, but it has some good, uh, good little phrases and words, like naive, broke the camel's back, or the straw that broke the camel's back. Um... And uh, it's the, but the basic topic is really uh, intercultural dating or marriage or relationships, right? Uh, having a relationship with somebody from another culture. Maybe you guys have seen the movie, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Uh, in fact, it's, it's, it's a good movie. It's funny. And it's, it's about this topic. Uh, this man uh, dates a woman who has a Greek family. And the Greek family doesn't like him because he's not Greek, right? They have a very strong idea that she should only date other Greek people. So it has a, there's a big problem with her family. Uh, it's a comedy, so it's not too serious. But uh, it's, you know, it's the same basic idea. So, you know, maybe some of you, I don't know, what do you think about this idea of, uh, you know, dating people or having relationships with people from other cultures, now, certainly, uh, Tomoe and I have this issue. She's sitting right here on the bed right now. And uh, we uh, sometimes uh, have difficulties because of our uh, different cultures and languages. We have a language barrier. Um, we communicate with each other in English because um, I know very, very, very little Japanese. <laughs> and uh, her English is, is good. So... That's how we communicate, but it's not her native language. So sometimes uh, she says something and she means something, but and I hear something else, and something she doesn't mean, and we have a miscommunication, and that can cause problems sometimes. Uh, sometimes we have big arguments, uh, and, but really it's just a misunderstanding, a, a, a language misunderstanding. Sometimes it might be a culture misunderstanding. Of course, uh, Japanese culture and American culture uh, are different. Uh, we all know, you know, some of the stereotypes, but um, but you know, there are little things and sometimes big things that uh, that are different, and it can be hard for us to understand each other about those points. 
So um, it, it's a little bit uh, of uh, extra difficulty when you date someone from another culture, and especially if different languages are involved. Now, on the other hand, it's also an opportunity to learn and grow, right? You, you learn about uh, a lot of new things. The other person has different ideas, different views, a different uh, point of view on life uh, from your own and from your own culture, and that can help you grow and uh, uh, learn more about the world and hopefully be more open and flexible. Uh, and that's great. Uh, in fact, that's one of the benefits also of just traveling in general or learning another language. Uh, you go beyond your own little small country. And most of us, we grow up and we're told that our country is the best, right? And we know this is true when we're young. Um, all Americans know that America is number one. America is the best country in the world. In fact, a lot of Americans believe that, even adults. Um, I'd say probably most Americans believe that. They think uh, everything in America is the best, and other countries are not as good at anything. We're the best at everything, and we're, uh, everything we do is good and correct. And, you know, this is not... People get mad at the United States because of this, um, mainly because the United States has a lot of uh, power right now, and we don't use that power very well. Um, however, I've traveled to many countries, and I can tell you that most Japanese people think Japan is number one, and it's the best culture and country in the world. And most Thai people think that Thailand is the best country in the world. And they, now, they know it's not the richest, but they, they still think, you know, well, our culture, it's still the best. And I think most people think that. Uh, most people are taught that when they grow up. They're taught by their parents. They're taught by their uh, society, by their media that there's something special about their country which is better than others. And uh, while it's nice to like your country, it's a dangerous idea. It's, um, travel can help to get rid of that uh, illusion. And an illusion is something that's not true, but you believe it is true. Um, so when I, uh, of course, I never really thought America was always number one, but, you know, I didn't understand the rest of the world. When I traveled to India uh, the first time I left America, I saw, wow, you know, there are other ways of living. There are other ways of doing things. And uh, some of them are better than America. Some of them I liked better. There were many parts of uh, Indian culture and uh, parts of the, the country in general that I thought were better than the United States. And, you know, I, I, there were other parts that I thought America was quite good. And then I, you know, later I traveled to Japan and lived there and uh, Korea and lived there and Thailand and lived there. And uh, I traveled in Italy a little bit and in England a little bit. And uh, I started to realize, wow, there are many, many ways uh, of living, many ways to do things, many different religions, many way things to believe. And, uh, you know, there is no best country. Certainly, America's not the best, but, you know, none of these countries were the best. Uh, they all had great things. They all had uh, very nice things about them that were different and unique and special. And so that's, uh, that's a great thing about travel and a great thing about learning a language and a great thing about connecting with people from other countries. And it can also be a great thing about dating people or having a relationship with someone from another country. Because then it becomes very, very personal. When you travel, it's not so personal. You know, you go to a country and you see it and you learn something and then you go home. Uh, if you live there for a while, it's a little deeper, of course. But um, if you have a relationship with someone from another country, it's even more deep. Because then you really start to see how differently people think and how different people's beliefs can be. Um, and, you know, that can be very good. It, it's sometimes difficult, but in general, I think it's very, very good. It certainly has been very, very good for me and has helped me uh, open my mind more to the world um, and hopefully uh, not be a typical American. <laughs> uh, another issue, uh, in the mini story, I, uh, I kind of I told a little mini story about uh, somebody on the street um, coming up to me. 
and uh, trying to make me become a Christian. And actually, this is kind of a true story. Uh, it's based on a true story because I used to live in uh, Georgia and also South Carolina in the United States. These areas are in the southeast part of America. And the southeast is very, very Christian. When I say Christian, I mean Protestant, uh, Baptist mostly, and very evangelical. Evangelical means uh, they, they're aggressive. They try to change people's religion. And so I would be walking around my town, and this would happen. This happened to me a lot, especially in South Carolina. Uh, people would walk up to me and start talking to me, and then, and then very soon they would start talking about religion, and they would criticize me and attack me because I wasn't part of their religion. Uh, and you know, I really actually hate that about Southern culture in the, the Southeast part of the United States. I like some things about the South, but I really hated that part because I was often bothered by these people. Uh, and it, it's, it's a kind of intolerance. It, it's a kind of uh, what I was just talking about with travel. Um, these people usually had never been outside of America. They had uh, no contact, no experience with people of other religions. They criticized Islam, for example, but they had never met a Muslim person. They certainly had never read the Quran. Um, until they met me, they had never met a Buddhist before. And I'm only a, kind of a cowboy American Buddhist. I don't know if that's, that, if that's real or not. Um, so they really have no experience of the world. And so if you have no experience of the world, you're quite naive. And when you're naive, it's easy to have very strong beliefs about something, about a religion or about something else. It's easy to believe you're the best and you're always right if you never have experiences of other people in other places that have different beliefs that are also quite good or quite interesting or quite powerful or quite helpful. And, you know, most South Carolina is a small little place. Most people in South Carolina uh, have never traveled outside the United States. Many have never traveled outside of South Carolina. They've never been to a big American city, even. So their experience is very small. It's quite naive. Um, and so living there was a bit difficult. It wasn't only uh, these, this, these kind of Christian people, um, but it, it was many other kinds of uh, things uh, that where they had these very narrow, small beliefs, and they, w they wouldn't debate them. They wouldn't consider other ideas. It was just, they're right, and you're wrong. And unfortunately, we see that in uh, the United States, in our government right now, uh, this same mentality. I, I would say George Bush has this mentality, uh, and the people who support George Bush have this mentality. George Bush is very popular in South Carolina, for example. Still very popular. In the rest of the country, not so popular, but uh, in places like South Carolina, he's still very popular. And he has the same kind of mentality. America's number one. Everything we do is the best. Uh, Islamic people, Muslim people are totally wrong and bad. Um, any other part of the world, they're not as good as we are. These are beliefs that uh, are common in parts of America and unfortunately common in our government right now. Um, so I don't know if we can make more Americans uh, travel or meet people from other countries. Maybe that might help. I don't know. That's your job. Meet some Americans and teach them about the world. Teach them about your country. All right. Well, I guess that's all for the commentary. I guess I talked about several topics uh, this time. Uh, I hope you're enjoying Effortless English. And look, to, look at the forums. I need your help. I've put a couple forum ideas asking for your help and your contribution, your actions. So go read the forums and uh, help improve the Effortless English Club. See you next time. Bye-bye.